controller. Look at that. New bash guard came with it. All the cables, mounting. You think we can get all this stuff installed in one video? Let's do it. So I'm thinking in today's video, I'm going to change everything that I don't really like about this E-Ride Pro SS. And it starts with the power, the EBMX X9000. I'll be able to run 15 kilowatts on this bike all the time. And I think it'll be perfect with that. It came with all these connectors, has this harness. It has a new upgraded battery cable from the breaker, which is really good for the increased power. It came with these super nice mounting plates on the side and it's got a new bash guard metal sized right for the controller. And I'm also going to, I'm going to change these bars because I don't like the rise on this bar. If you see the rise is pretty small, but the rise on these a 76 pro taper bars is like 76 millimeters, which like I think is about three inches. So you can see it's a little bit higher and should be a little more comfortable to ride. So definitely gonna change these. And also, remember I told you these bars were too wide? For Taiwan traffic, this bike was actually hard to get through on the traffic in some spots. So it got me thinking, I need to cut the bars down like on the rest of my e-bikes. Now I have all the rest of those bikes down around 72, like here. So that's actually a lot that has to come off the bars. So yeah, it's gonna, Gonna chop those down and I'm gonna put a direct mount riser stem on the fork, this grid shift one. I have this one on the Saran and I love it. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to remove this front fender so I can have better access to the controller. And then after that, I'm gonna remove the battery door. I will remove the battery and close the electrical system by switching off the breaker. So let's remove this fender first. I wanted the first build of this bike to be 100% stock, but it's time to mod it now. <laughs> for sure, this thing needs more power. For sure, for sure. There's no possibility for any shorting now. We can just pull this right out. Now let's remove this battery lid and I can use this four millimeter to get it off. I just don't want it in my way. When I did the Suron, it was constantly flip-flopping, remember? The door was always, in the way. Now I don't have to deal with it. Now I have access to all the wires for the controller. Let's remove this ignition plate so I can get access to all the wires behind here. Then I can pull this breaker plate back and start the controller install. So yeah, there's a ton of ton of wires and connectors here that I need to get to. Now let's remove this controller and I'll use this five, four and three millimeter hex to do that. And we can remove these top bolts first. There's two bolts here on the top. There's these two bolts on the bottom. And then there's this one little clip holding these brake cables. That's all got to come off. And we'll start with the top. I use this driver to remove the screw because my my T-wrench can't fit with the forks in the way. Now with these two bolts on each side of the frame, I can loosen this breaker plate and pull it back and get access to all these wires to drop the stock controller. Now I have this breaker plate pulled back and I've got all the connections out. And the EBMX kit came with this upgraded power cable. But my E-Ride 2.0 has the V2 power cable. You can see the gauge is much thicker on the battery cables. So I'm gonna try to keep this and not use this harness if possible, but I need to dig in here to make sure that there's no extra connector that will connect to the new controller. So to drop this controller, I'm gonna need to disconnect this one, which is going to the controller. And I'm also gonna unplug the main harness that goes to it. With the main harness disconnected, I can now remove these three phase wires and also the positive and negative from the battery. And then I can drop this controller. And I'll use a ratchet to do that. You can see it has these little boots. And if you just pull the boot off, you just need to unscrew those bolts right there. 
That would be awesome if I could reuse this battery connector. What do you think? It's thicker, right? Yeah, it's thicker. Yeah, the wires are better than the one that came with the EVMX. And there it is. Stock E-Ride Pro controller is now removed. I dropped the controller. I disconnected the three phase wires. I have the battery leads disconnected. I unplugged the main harness. We'll open up this boot and this will give me access to a lot of things that I wanna remove. So to start, I'm gonna remove this tilt sensor right here. And that one's plugged here. And then over here is the kickstand sensor. And I believe it's this one. I'm just gonna disconnect that. And also I removed the brake sensors because that's pretty annoying. I don't want the throttle to cut off when I press in the brake. It's these three wires, these three plugs here are going to the display. So we're gonna need to unplug those. We're not gonna use that. And also, I'm gonna remove the headlight because I'm not really using that. <laughs> Did you see this crew fly? <laughs> Now I think is a good opportunity to change those bars and also change to a direct stem. I didn't like the rise on these stock bars. Why? Well, I'm used to my bikes. You can see all those bikes have A76 Pro Taper bars on them. So I'm kind of used to like a three or a three and a half inch rise. And I think the rise on these bars is, seems definitely under three inches. But you know, you're, you're more upright when you have a higher rise on your bars. It's just a more comfortable seating position. And also it's a lot easier to wheelie. Now I'm gonna put the bars in my vise and I'm gonna use these soft jaws so I don't wreck them. These bars are around 82 cm, but that's way too big. I need them down around maybe 71, 72. So I think I'm gonna take nine cm off of the bar length on these. So that's four and a half cm on each side roughly. So I will mark that off now. After I cut the piece on one side, I can just match it up on the other side to make it exact. And I'll bring the blade down just at the center of my mark and then tighten this up. Now let's pull this out and spin the vise so I can get to the other side. Let's double check my measurement. Okay. My guide in place. Cut this side. Came out pretty good. Now I can use my reamer. This is a great tool to get the edges nice and smooth really, really deburs the metal nicely. Sweet, great. Now we can put these bars back on the bike with that new direct mount stem from Grid Shift. And we'll just set that there for now. I'll loosen up these headlight bolts and that's actually where I'm gonna mount this new direct mount stem. Now I'm gonna finish removing all these sensors. And this one is the kickstand sensor. I already disconnected it over there. But now I'm just going to remove it from here because I'm going to remove the kickstand as well. And then the last sensor I'm gonna remove is this tilt sensor. And this is the direct mount stem I'm gonna put on it, made by Grid Shift. It's really nice. It's got a nice rise. Came with some Loctite bolts. And uh, that's gonna mount right here, right to the fork. Now, I'm not gonna use the Loctite because, you know, we're gonna change the fork later on. The front fork is gonna be a BOS, which has 42 millimeter stanchions, and it's made for Emoto. So for right now, I'm not going to 
Loctite this in. Just want to get everything in position here. Oh, these bars look so much better. So I'll just leave these bars hand tight. And then I have somewhere to put all the controls from the controller once I install it. I think it's time to install the controller now. So let's see what's inside the box. Let's open this baby up. X9000. And here is, this is like, these are some good resources, some community information, installation guides. That stuff's pretty important. And ooh, this thing is pretty. <laughs> Look at that. Wow. This looks so much nicer in person. Doesn't that look sick, dude? Yeah. Okay. Let's see what else came in the box. I guess these are the harnesses for the other bikes, like Suron and Talaria. So I can actually wire this thing up to my Suron using one of these harnesses. Or Talaria if we get one. And here is... I think this is the new display. Yeah, that's a new display. This thing replaces this one. I guess this one has a lot more functionality and controls with this controller that this one doesn't. But I saw that the EBMX company is actually coming out with a full size display and a control switch just like my hub motorbikes. So as soon as I see that thing's available, I'm definitely gonna buy it. Yeah, this is the Bluetooth dongle for programming the controller when we're ready for that. I'll make sure every connection is good and then I'll mount the controller on the bike. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to attach these three phase wires going to the motor and it's really easy to do. You just follow the colors, blue, green, yellow, and it's marked on the controller. And I will use these five bolts with these flat washers and the lock washers to install the three phase wires and also the two positive and negative battery connections on the outside of the controller. These little boots they have on the phase wire connections is nice. It can keep the water off of that. And then I can leave this connection here and that will plug to the controller here once I got everything else wired up. And have your red and black battery terminals going up this way. It will be a lot easier to ins install the controller. I'm almost ready to mount the X9000 on the bike, but before I do that, I need to make the remaining connections. And this two-in-one cable that came in the box will connect to this connector here on the controller. And on the other end, you have the green one for the display, and the yellow one is for the regen thumb throttle. And then this connector on the controller will connect to the, the one connected to the main harness on the bike right here. And then once I make all of these connections, I can mount the controller on the bike. But before I do that, I'm going to heat shrink all these old connections and then tuck them back in the front of the bike. And then I will push this breaker plate back into position so I can mount the controller flat on the front of the bike. After heat shrinking all the connectors in the neck of the bike, I still need to do a few more. Now down here where I moved the kickstand sensor and the tilt sensor, I have some empty connectors and I also need to shrink wrap those. So I plugged the main harness to the connector on the controller and I heat shrinked it. And there's a little screw terminal there that you just need to make sure is tight when you connect these. And this is the Bluetooth, which just line the notches up and line the arrows up on the top. And listen for the click. And then the last control, the last connector to mount is this one that goes to the two in one. And I have that routed up through the top of the bike. And I will plug the, the display and the regen thumb throttle to that. Just once again, line up the arrows and the notches inside. Get that nice and tight. You're gonna have some difficulty when you go to put this controller on. You really have to sort all the wires out behind here 
to make sure it can lay flat. I struggled with it for a little while, but I finally was able to get all the bolts lined up. Now, once you get the controller mounted, you can route the brake line and the throttle over here with the clip. And then I'm gonna tuck up all these wires up underneath here and put the new bash guard on that came with the kit, as well as mount this Bluetooth dongle underneath. And then for the E-Ride Pro, this kit actually came with these nice plates and they just go on the side here. You can kind of tuck up all the wires. So now I just have to tighten up this controller and then install these side plates. These plates make it look super nice. Now we'll put the plate on the other side and then the controller is pretty much mounted, man. Yeah, there it is. It looks sweet, doesn't it? I went ahead and removed all the fastening hardware for the bash guard off the stock one and I'll reuse it on this EBMX. And you can see this thing is super heavy compared to that and it's also well ventilated. So I think it's gonna provide more airflow for that motor. So I'll put this lower part on first and then I can swing it up. There's two bolts on each side to put this bash guard on, one here and one here. Okay. I'm gonna put the brake levers back on. And the brake levers and the throttle and that. And then I think we're gonna be ready to hook the battery up and see if this controller works. You think it works? I think so. Oh God, I hope so. I'll get everything in place and then I'll make the final adjustment. I need to put this grip on. And we're gonna flip the breaker on and let's see if this baby powers up. If it, oh, yep, there we go. Earlier today, I downloaded this eBMX app and now I'm gonna go into the general settings. And for the bike type, I'm gonna select E-Ride Pro. And for the motor type, we're gonna select E-Ride Pro motor. And then we're gonna press save. And then we're gonna go into modes and levels and just check the power level. I wanna make sure that the that the third mode goes to 15 kilowatt, and I see that it does. And then we're gonna go into the twist throttle calibration, and start the setup wizard, and it's just gonna tell you to wait like four seconds, and release the, have the throttle release now, and now twist the throttle to set the max voltage signal and release the throttle. And it gives me a range of 0.86 to 4.31, four volts. And that's good. So I'll save that and save. And I think, I think probably that should do it. Let's see, let me put it on one. Oh, wow. oh man.